a missionary to Native Americans, and the college is founded, and certainly its supporters believe he's continuing the Native American ministry. In fact, Native American students had been relegated to what was basically a grammar school, and Wheelock was in the process of building a college for white students. And like a lot of colleges that took money for Native American evangelization, a lot of that money actually ends up going to support white students and transform them into missionaries and ministers. And then he talks about Harvard, and he talks about Princeton. Um, Dartmouth is not alone. But this brings me to the issue of slavery. Um, <clears throat> you know, when President Obama was first elected that November in 2008, there's no question whatever your political bent, whoever you voted for, it was an historic moment. I think the world heaved a sigh of relief at that time. For so long, people had spent their time hitting their heads what felt like against a brick wall. And now the wall had become a door, and it opened a crack. The question is, would it be kicked open or slammed shut? And that's not up to one person, even if he's the most powerful person on earth, because there's a force more powerful. And it's all of you, and it's people like you and not like you all over the country who deeply care about what's happening in this country. It's up to movements. Um, you know, what happens when the community organizer in chief, he was a community organizer, becomes the commander in chief? Who does the community organizing then? And I think at that time, so many movements had come together to elect President Obama. Right, you had the anti-war movement. Well, I mean, the main difference between him and Hillary Clinton was this one moment when he gave a speech as a state senator against the Iraq war. Um, and ultimately, he had taken it off his website. But uh, as the election started to gear up and you saw what was happening, Iraq, you can't take that away from him. He had spoken against the war in Iraq. Um, Hillary Clinton, though her speech, and I remember watching it that night as students were being dragged out of her office protesting in New York, I remember watching the speech that night. She gave every argument eloquently against the war in Iraq. You had no idea which way she was going to go. No one knew. Of course, she did, I guess. Um, Bill Clinton knew. Um, but at the end of that speech, after, after laying out the case against war, she said, which is why I'll be voting for the war in Iraq. I mean, it was quite a brilliant speech, infuriated so many people. And what was remarkable is even in the time when the base, when the people who were going to decide who would be the next president of the United States um, were pushing her to at least say she recognized then 